this big and this global, there's always something going on. There's no waiting around for things to happen. If you have a good idea, it's going to get heard. Step up. And this company is going to let you keep climbing. With bigger challenges. More responsibility. Endless opportunity. It's a big job. Serving vital needs for food and energy. Achieving the right results. The right way. If you're going to make a real difference in the world, there's no better place to start. But you better be ready to expect more. March 23, 2007, Francisco Garcia was working at the Archer Daniel Midlands plant in Decatur, Illinois, and was killed on the job dying a horrible death when the pressure seals on a mechanical recompression evaporator failed and sprayed him with scalding liquid materials. Francisco received third degree burns over 90% of his body and died an excruciating death from his wounds later the next day. Francisco's injuries were so horribly painful that his skin was peeling off his face and body. He was unable to retain his body fluids and so tremendous amounts of fluids had to be pumped into him. This caused a grotesque disfigurement. Surgery was performed on him, but when they opened his belly, his intestines were black and necrotic, so he was closed up and several hours later he died. ADM readily admitted to liability, but only offered to pay his family $500,000. But that was clearly a pittance for a man like Francisco, who was in the prime of his life and the main breadwinner supporting his parents and five brothers and sisters in Mexico. Since ADM had already admitted liability, the only legal issue to be decided in the courts was compensatory damage, or in other words, what was the true value of Francisco's life to his family, not as ADM lowballed it, but the real true value as seen through the eyes of a jury. ADM's lawyers tried unsuccessfully to diminish the value of Francisco's life by unsuccessfully trying to introduce the fact that Francisco was an illegal immigrant. And yet they knew that the United States Constitution's 14th Amendment provides for equal protection under the law for all people. It says people, not citizens, within the jurisdiction of the United States. The ADM lawyer even suggested that a verdict of only a few hundred thousand dollars would be plenty for this family as he pointed to Mr. and Mrs. Garcia in the courtroom. The implication was clearly this poor Mexican family. And ADM's lawyer even tried to avoid all damages by arguing that Francisco's parents and siblings were not his next of kin. In this insider exclusive special, holding corporate America accountable, the Archer Daniels Midland story, we bring you the inside story direct from the courtroom on how the Garcia's family lawyer, Don Shapiro, founder and partner at the law firm of Don Shapiro Limited, got justice for Francisco's family with a record-breaking verdict by successfully turning ADM's mean-spirited argument completely around and arguing that in America, every family, including Francisco Garcia's family, should be treated the same way as any other family and the same way they would if the victim had been the son of an ADM executive. You see, in America, the 14th Amendment really provides for equal protection under the law for all people. And people means all people, not just citizens, within the jurisdiction of the United States. So yes, illegal immigrants in the United States are entitled to the same rights and protections as citizens and they have the right to recover under the law and sue individuals in the courts of the United States, especially for injury-related claims. Don Shapiro has earned the highest respect from citizens and lawyers alike as one of the best people's trial lawyers in Illinois and in the nation. He has seen many innocent and hardworking people taken advantage of by major corporations, and because of that, he is driven to fight for people who have been harmed by the willful or negligent actions of others. He learned a long time ago that if a man hasn't discovered something he will die for, he isn't fit to live. 
His goal is not only to get justice for his clients, but to make sure that corporations respect and uphold our own Constitution, and especially the 14th Amendment, providing for equal protection under the law for all people within the jurisdiction of the United States. Because injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere, and justice and power must be brought together so that whatever is just may be powerful, and whatever is powerful may be just. Hi, I'm Steve Murphy, and this is the Insider Exclusive, live from Chicago, Illinois, at the law firm of Donald Shapiro Limited. It is my great privilege to introduce Don Shapiro to the show. Welcome to the show, Don. Thank you. Um, tell our audience a little bit about what kind of a lawyer you are. Well, I represent injury victims, people that have been uh, injured in industrial accidents, uh, people who have been injured in motor vehicle collisions, victims of medical malpractice, people who have gotten terribly injured or killed, as the case may be. Oftentimes, these people don't have much money to hire a lawyer and they call upon you to represent them and you have to take their case on what's called a contingency. In other words, you evaluate the case. If you take on the case, you have to invest a lot of your time and financial resources. If you win, great for your client and for you. But if you lose, that's not good, is it? Not a good thing. That's why you have to be very careful in making sure to yeah. the extent you can that you have a meritorious case before yeah. proceeding. Um, Today we're talking about a case where you represented a, a worker, Francisco Garcia. Yes. Tell us a little bit about who Francisco was. Okay. Francisco was a young man uh, born in Tizapan, El Alto, Mexico, who came to the United States in his late teens, worked here, eventually moved to Decatur, Illinois, which is in central Illinois. and was hired by a company called ECF that supplied contract labor to the Archer Daniels Midland Company. And he was working as a pipe insulator where he'd get up on scaffolds and he would put in insulation in the ceilings around the pipes. And uh, he was, uh, by all accounts, uh, a wonderful young man uh, stayed very close with his family, his mom and dad, five brothers and sisters. He supported them, didn't and he? And he supported them. He sent money home from the U.S. because a uh, very poor standard of living where they came from. I think he made something like a dollar a day working in the fields in Mexico when they had work. It was seasonal. Mm -hmm. And then he was able to come to the United States earned a good living at, uh, in Decatur and was able to send money down to the family. Mm -hmm. Well, what happened to him uh, the, the day that he had the accident? Well, Francisco was working on a scaffold. There had been an, a machine, an evaporator machine used in the ADM plant that had been out of service for a few days because there had been a problem with the pressure seals on the machine. They never found what was wrong with it and for whatever reason, about a half an hour before this explosion, they decided to put the evaporator machine back into production. Yeah, With it, so without finding any Without problem. finding what had yeah. happened a few days ago that caused a failure. Well, now it caused an even worse failure. The pressure seals failed to contain the hot molten liquid inside the evaporator. It sprayed out. And Francisco had the misfortune to be standing right there on the scaffold. He was hooked into the scaffold. He couldn't even get away from it. Took him a few minutes till he could unhook everything, made his way down. By that time, he had suffered burns, third degree burns over 90% of his body. Right. It was a horrible, horrible incident. And his skin was basically peeling off because of this, right? They said that when he came down, he touched his face and strips of flesh yeah. were coming off. Now he was rushed to the hospital? They, they put him in a safety shower, then they got him to the hospital. 
And what happened By the time then? the paramedics got there. Well, they, they treated him locally for a while. Mm -hmm. And then they shipped him to Springfield, Illinois, a little uh, bit, bigger and better facility. And after about a day or so, uh, they couldn't save him. He was so uh, burned that they did a procedure to try to relieve the swelling. He had a lot of swelling because they had to pump fluids into his right. body because of the fluid loss. When they cut into his intestines, the doctor said it was necrotic. It was black. Yeah. There was no hope of salvage. So they sewed him back up. And a few hours later, he passed away. Now, when you did an investigation about whether you wanted to take this case, ADM came forward at some point in time and admitted liability. It was clearly there a liability, wasn't it? Well, they admitted liability after we did the discovery in the case yeah. and found out the documentation that showed what had happened. Yeah, and again, I want to emphasize, had his family not had a lawyer involved, and especially a lawyer with your success, the ADM wouldn't have given them squat. Oh, Nothing. undoubtedly. You know, they don't come forward and say, I'm sorry, our pipes blew up, you're dead, I'm sorry, here's some money. They don't do that, do they? That doesn't happen in real life. So in discovery, they finally came forward, admitted liability. It was their fault, right? Right. They really had no choice to admit yeah. liability. They thought that was the better strategy to try to hold down the damages yeah. when we had them nailed to the wall. Yeah. And what this story is about and why this case went to court is they wanted to pay very little money, didn't they, for a man who was supporting his parents and five brothers and sisters, right? Yeah, not, not only that, but his pain and suffering mm -hmm. and, and the loss of the relationship that they mm -hmm. had with their son. Imagine losing your, your child mm -hmm. and having this huge corporation yeah. offer you a few hundred thousand dollars yeah. to settle the case. How did they come, I'm just curious, how do they come up with 500,000? Where do they get this number? I have no idea where they picked that out. Yeah. Uh, we told them at the time, add another zero to it and we'll talk. Yeah. Uh, they laughed at me. They said, oh, well, you're down here in Macon County, Illinois. The juries don't give b big verdicts down here, you know, especially to people from Mexico. Yeah. Uh, they didn't say the last part, but that was implied. Yeah. And uh, so we had to take the case to trial. Yeah. And tell us your legal strategy in pursuing getting compensatory damages for Francisco's family. Well, we wanted to develop the relationship that he had with mom and dad. Here was a young man who had come to this country. He never lost touch. He called his parents religiously. Uh, he, he sent them money. A big part of his paycheck went to mom and dad and brothers and sisters down mm -hmm. in Mexico. And then the other side was the pain and suffering right. aspect of it, the bringing out all the details as to what had happened. One of the nurses testified that she had been a trauma nurse for 25 years, and this was the worst case she had ever seen. Right. And ADM fought you tooth and nail in developing this relationship that you wanted to show between him and the family that he was supporting, right? Oh, right. They wanted to say, well, you know, he was here in, in Illinois. The parents were back in Mexico yeah. as if the parents would love their son any less because yeah. he was here. Well, basically, they said his family wasn't next of kin. I think those were the words, weren't they? Well, <laughs> Somehow there was a document in which Francisco put his mother's name down yeah. in the spot that said spouse. Yeah. And so they say, wait a minute, he's married. Yeah. You know, the, the wife should get everything, except there was no wife. The wife was the mother. Mm -hmm. You know, none of it made sense, but they were trying to get off the hook. Yeah. Um, how did the jury respond to this? Well, the jury didn't give that much credence at all. We yeah. talked to them afterwards. That really wasn't the issue. Yeah. Um, the, the issue was the amount of money. Now, there were two, two issues that they pursued in court. Number one, they wanted to show that the parents and the brothers and sisters were not next of kin because if you're taking care of people, you're no longer alive. Uh, those people are going to end up getting more money because there's more people to take care of. That's number one. Number two was the issue of let's talk about illegal 
immigrant. Because what did ADM, a top Fortune 50 company, well-respected, makes a lot of money, what did their lawyer try to do in court? Okay. What they wanted to do was to try to introduce some evidence that would tend to show that Francisco was an illegal immigrant. And why did they want to introduce that? Because they knew full well that there would be tremendous prejudice against him and his family mm -hmm. if they could show that he was illegal. And what did the trial judge do? Trial judge said, no way right. are you getting that evidence in because number one, it's not relevant to any issues yeah. in the case. He had been certified by th his employer. ADM was happy to have him working in their plant. Mm -hmm. They couldn't come now and question that he was illegal. And the judge said, you're not going to get that in. It's highly prejudicial. Now, the verdict came in at what? $6.74 million. Mm -hmm. And explain a little bit about how that verdict came in, because I understand 4.6 was awarded for loss of society. For our audience, what does that mean? Okay, That means the loss of the relationship that the parents had with their son. If you lose a child, mm -hmm you've lost a relationship for the rest of your life yeah. with that child. Yeah. And so the law seeks to compensate you to balance the scales of justice, so to speak, for that loss. I understand $2 million was awarded to his estate and another $1.5 million was awarded for pain and suffering. How do they come up with these numbers? Where does that come from? Well, we never know exactly how the jury comes up when with you numbers, talk to the jurors but when later. we talked to them afterwards they just said look you know we saw that this man had suffered greatly mm -hmm. the defense tried to say well wait a minute they gave him drugs when he was in the hospital so he wasn't in pain yeah so he didn't <laughs> suffer that much pain when, when, you know when speaking to the jury later do you ask the jury did that kind of make you a little angry do you ask them that i i did ask them that and they weren't thrilled with that argument yeah uh, especially because we were able to show at various points yeah he was there was it mentioned in the records that he was agitated and they had to give him more medication. So obviously he did have some consciousness yeah. of pain and suffering. Now, some a lot of cases are appealed. Yes. ADM has appealed this case. Yes, they have. On what grounds? Okay, on the, the biggest ground is the exclusion of the evidence that they've proposed on illegal immigration. Yeah. Now... We are, we're Americans. We know the United States Constitution. We know the 14th Amendment, and the 14th Amendment protects all persons. Doesn't the exact word persons, right? right? Not just citizens. I am baffled by the fact that the ADM lawyers don't understand that or don't want to understand that. Why do you think that's so? Well, look, they don't want to pay the money. Exactly. I mean, that's I mean, the bottom this, this line. This is ridiculous. Okay? This they, is ridiculous. They had this man. He was good enough to work in their plant. Yeah, yeah. Now they're just looking for an out. Some of the questions that uh, when, I, when we travel around the country uh, are, and maybe you can answer them, is how do you show to the jury the value of somebody's life? You know, you talk about the life that they had. Yeah. You talk about what would be fair. You talk about all the things that the parents aren't going to do. They're not going to go to his wedding. They're not going to have a relationship with his, with his children, which would be their grandchildren. You just kind of try to bring to real life terms what it means mm -hmm. when a loved one dies, how, how things are so totally disrupted. Mm -hmm. How do you put a, a value on that? Imagine you're in front of the jury and you're saying these things, how, how, do you, how, do you, how do you elaborate on that? Well, you know, it, it's difficult to say if something is worth three million, five million, yeah. seven million, where exactly do you draw your line? Yeah. I usually tell the jury, I usually suggest a figure, and I'd say, put all this together. The 12 of you, get together, think about it, right. and what would a reasonable person accept to have their son right. taken away. Now, in this case, we had the advantage of the fact that there was a mother who lost a son, a father who lost her son, 
and five brothers and sisters. So we didn't just ask for like $7 million, give them $7 million. We said, mom and dad should each get $2 million, okay? And the brothers and sisters should each get a million dollars. Mm-hmm. And then the jury gave us what, the, what they did. Yeah, I uh, want our audience to understand that uh, we value trial lawyers like yourself who take on cases that are difficult. And a lot of people are not aware that illegal immigrants or undocumented workers have rights too. And you're pursuing the American way and the American dream for these people because they are entitled to justice too. And I want to thank you for spending your time with us on this show. Thanks for joining us. You can get more information about our guest and the issues at insiderexclusive.com.